Welcome back to my channel. It's Kayla from Kayla's Cricut Creations. In this video, I'm going to be making print and cut magnetic bookmarks. I have seen these all over TikTok and it's been on my to make list for so long and I'm finally getting to make them. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten back into reading and it's one of my favorite new hobbies besides crafting, of course. When putting this video together, I made a lot of mistakes and I had to redo it a few times, so I will teach you the best way to make these. For this video, I'm going to be using white cardstock and holographic laminate sheets. You can definitely just use glossy paper for these. I only had sticker paper and thankfully I saw Naisha over at the Little Craft Nest do it this way. I'll make sure to link her video down in the description box and definitely go check out her really great YouTube channel. The laminate sheets are from Tech Wrap Craft. I'll link all my supplies in the description box. These are an assortment of designs and there's some really fun ones. Before we start, I want to show you some of my mistakes. The first time I made these, when I folded the designs together, they didn't line up correctly. So I changed it in Cricut Design Space and the next time it lined up correctly, but one side the words were backwards. So definitely watch my Design Space tutorial to see how to do it the correct way. I quickly wanted to show you this one though. I thought this image was so pretty with the butterflies and flowers coming out of the book and I used the butterfly laminate sheet so you can see like a little butterfly coming over the book with the sheet. It just turned out so cool. The problem was I was out of that laminate sheet so I am not using this design in today's video. I'm going to upload my images. I got them off of Creative Fabrica. This is a bundle, which I prefer when I'm doing something like this. I'm making multiple bookmarks and I want them to look somewhat uniform, but I want a variety also. So the bundle is really fun. I'm logged in, so I'm not sure how much this bundle is. You can buy it on its own if you don't have the Creative Fabrica membership, or they always have the option where you can sign up for the membership for free. You can download it, and if you decide you don't want the membership, you can always go in and cancel it. I'll click on upload to grab my designs. I already have these in Cricut Design Space, but I'll show you how I did this. Cricut just recently did an update, so I figured I would go in and show you. This brought me into my downloads folder, and here's all the images in the bundle, and I'll just click on this random one. It gives me a few different options. There's PNG and SVG. Since we're using Print and Cut, then we'll want to upload it as a PNG. This is the part that looks different now in Cricut Design Space. They just recently did an update where you can create multiple layers, which effectively gives you an SVG, which is really cool. So let's say we wanted this in different layers and we didn't have the option for an SVG. We could select this and make multiple layers. I have a full video on this, so I can link it down in the description box but I want this one today. And as you can see, it says it creates a single layer full color image for print and cut. I uploaded it into here, but I'm actually going to delete it because I wanna grab the others at the same time. I'm only going to be creating four today, so I'll upload those. It'll pull these in really large, so I'm going to make them smaller, but I'm going to size these all at the same time so that they all look kind of uniform. I feel like that looks pretty good. I'm just going to separate these out and I'll zoom in on Cricut Design Space too. I actually might make these just a little bit bigger. When I click on each image, it looks like it's almost two inches for the width. This one's 1.7, 2, 2.1. So I kind of want it to be around the two inch mark for the width, so that looks good. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a lot better. And I'm just gonna slide these to the side. The first one I'm going to do is the heart that says book lover. Then I'll show you these. These three need to be done a little bit differently. I've learned the hard way with these bookmarks like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I'll show you exactly how to do this. First, what I want to do is create an offset for this. You want a solid background, and to do that, I'm going to use the offset tool. You can definitely use the Create Sticker button. I find it easier, but it is for Cricut Access users only, so I wanna give an example that everyone can use. I'm gonna bring this down, and I'll select Offset. That is a little bit wider than I want it to be, so I am going to just scroll down a little bit. Okay, I like that a lot. It looks like it's at 0.111. I am going to copy that because I'm going to try and use the same offset for the others. I'll hit apply. 
With offset, I'm gonna move this away. Most of the time, there's some cuts in there that you don't want. The offset tool is not perfect, but there's an easy fix. What you'll do is go down to contour, and as you can see, the contour button is grayed out. I get this question a lot, why is it grayed out? That is because the operation is set to print thin cut and it needs to be switched to a basic cut. Now you can see the contour button appears. I'm going to click on it. An easy way to do this is click hide all contours. It will automatically keep the first one, which is that base layer that we want. So instead of having to go in and click on all of these individually, all you have to do is hit that bottom button. Then hit the X to click out. That's a super easy fix. I want this to be white. I'll go up to my color and switch it to white. You don't have to move this out of the way. I did so that you can see it. So I need to center this again. I'll drag my mouse over both. I'll come up to Align Center. While both of these are selected, you can see that in the Layers panel, I'm going to group these together. I'm going to be moving this as a pair around together and it's gonna make it easier. So now here's the part that got a little bit tricky when I was originally making these. What I wanna do next is I want to duplicate this. You can go up to the top and select Duplicate or you can hit Command D or Control D on your computer. I am going to bring this over here. Now I want this to be the back of my bookmark and I want this to be the front of my bookmark. They're going to fold over each other and I want them to line up. This heart makes it very easy because it's symmetric. The others are not as easy because none of the shapes are going to be symmetric with each other. I'll go up to flip and I want to select flip horizontal. Then I'm going to go to flip vertical. So flipping it vertical flips it where the bottom of the heart is down here. So you know when you bend it, it's going to match up. Also, I had to flip horizontal. If I didn't, I'll show you an example, I'll flip back. If you try to imagine it looking it upside down here, you can see that the words are not going to be spelled right. It's gonna start with a K and it's not going to look correctly. So what you need to do for this one is flip horizontal and flip vertical. I need something to connect these. I'll go over to my shapes and I'm going to grab a square. I'll make this white. Then for my sizing, I'm going to do 0.5 inches for my width and one inch for my height. I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm going to right click, send to back. I'm going to bring this down. You can see a little gap in here. I am going to bring this up where you can't see a gap anymore. And then same thing for this one. I like to bring it all the way off of that rectangle and I'm gonna bring it up until I can't see that gap. Now I need this to line up so I need to center it. I'll highlight over all three. I'll come up to align and I am going to hit center horizontally. While I have all three selected, you can see in the layers panel, all three of them are selected. I need to flatten it. You could hit Unite first, but you can skip that step as well because Flatten will get rid of these cut lines in here. And I will show you, I'll click Flatten. And it's hard to see because we're on white on white background. I'm going to click on Blank Canvas. And at the very top, I'm gonna to switch this to blue so you can see it better. So that one's done. Now I'll show you with the other ones how these are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I'm going to do the offset and I'm gonna double click in the distance and paste that other one and I'll hit enter. I like how that looks, so I'll hit apply. I am going to change this to white. Now I need to contour this cut line out. I'll switch this to a basic cut. Click contour and hide all contours. While I still have the offset selected, I will switch it to white. I'm going to highlight over both of these and group them together. And I should have duplicated my uh, rectangle. I might be able to go in the layers panel. Let's see, I'm gonna unflatten this. I am gonna come over here to this square or rectangle and hit duplicate and I'll do it a couple more times. That way I don't have to redo those dimensions and everything. I'm gonna highlight over this whole thing again. I wanna make sure all three are selected and I'll flatten that again. Now, how this one's gonna be different, I'm going to duplicate it. So let's try doing the same thing for the heart. I'm going to flip horizontal and flip vertical. So it's difficult to see, but you know that you're gonna be able to read the words here on both sides 
but if we try to fold these on top of each other, they're not gonna match up. It's kind of hard to tell looking at it in design space, but I'll show an example up on the screen because I messed this up already. But you can see that the B is over here and this B is over here. So if you're gonna fold it together, it's not going to match up. So I'm going to undo. What we need to do is just flip vertical. By flipping vertical, now you can see that when we fold it together, it's going to line up correctly. But the problem here is that you're not gonna be able to read the words. So I have not found a way around this. If your design is not symmetrical, like if you have a heart, a symmetrical butterfly, flower, those are gonna be fine. You can make it work with wording on it like I did with the heart. But with an odd shape like this, it's just not going to work. You can do like an oval maybe around it, but I like the look of this. So what I am going to do is actually remove the image from here. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. I might show an example with like an oval for one of these, we'll see. So I'm gonna kind of click out of that and start over. What you wanna do when you don't have a symmetrical shape and you have wording on here, you're gonna just wanna flip it vertical. But what I am gonna do for this is I am going to get rid of the wording on one side. So I'm gonna come down here to the image and I am going to hit delete. I'm going to be putting a holographic sheet over this so it's gonna have a little bit of shimmer and it's gonna be like little stars, I think. So I think it'll still look cute. Let's add this. I need to send this to the back again, and I'm just gonna bring this up until it covers it, and I'll bring this up until it covers it. I'm going to highlight over all three. I'll align center horizontally, and then I'll come down here and select flatten. For this next one, I think I'll give you an example with an oval. So I am going to grab a shape and grab an oval. I'm going to make this white. And then I'm going to hit shift on my keyboard and turn this 90 degrees. I'll right click and hit send to back. I am going to come up here to unlock my sizing so I can just size this how I want to. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to group this together. I don't have to use the offset tool for this one because I'm using the oval as a background. I'll hit duplicate. And this time I can flip horizontal and flip vertical. So I can keep the wording on this and also keep it all lined up. Hey, okay, that one's really cute. This last one, I'm gonna do it just like this one here. Okay, here's how this looks. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so it's going to kind of be about the same size as these. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to click make it. It looks like it's showing up on one page, which is perfect. For some reason, I can't see some of my image and I think it's just a Cricut Design Space thing, let's hope. I'll hit continue. I'll hit send a printer. I am going to turn my bleed off. I've been doing that lately. I know it actually recommends to keep the bleed on, but I have a white offset, so it just makes sense to me to keep it off. I'll select Use System Dialog and Print. For my media and quality, I will go down to Best for quality, and then I'll hit Print. I'm using 65 pound white cardstock. This is from Michaels and it's the Recollections brand. I use this all the time for any of my cardstock projects. For my cut setting, I'll go to Browse All Materials and type in Cardstock. I'm going to choose Cardstock Adhesive Backed. Here's what it looks like after it's printed. Part of it you can't see and it looks like it's missing. That's because it's all white. Here's the laminate sheet I'm using. It's little tiny stars, which I think will be fun because there's some little stars in the images. With these laminate sheets, you wanna make sure you cut it down so it's inside of those black registration lines. If you have it over it, the Cricut won't be able to read it, even if you have a maker machine, and that's just because it has a design on the sheets that it just struggles to read. There's also a white offset that you can't see around the images, so I'm trying to be extra careful when I'm marking off where to cut it because I don't want to not include that. I just use my scissors to cut these and it's really nice the tech wrap ones have lines on the back which makes it easy. 
I'm just double checking that it's cut down to the correct size. To add my laminate sheet, first what I like to do is peel back just a little bit of the backing so I have a tiny bit of the sticky piece exposed. I make sure it's lined up directly over my images, then I press the top down and use my squeegee over that. This next part is the best hack for not getting bubbles in your laminate sheets. What you want to do is use a squeegee that has a felt side. For some reason, that makes the biggest difference. If I use the hard scraper side, it will get bubbles in it, and all you do is press against that backing. I don't see any bubbles in this at all. It is amazing. When I did it before, I would literally have bubbles all over my paper. I place it in the top left corner of my mat and use my brayer tool to press it into the mat. Then I load it into the Cricut machine. The Cricut was really struggling to read the registration lines and I got an error message. That's because you need some white space on both sides of those black lines, but you don't want to cut the laminate sheet down too far, otherwise it won't be covering your white offset. I unloaded the mat from the machine and thankfully this was a pretty easy fix. I was able to peel back a little bit of the laminate sheet and I cut slits on the corners. You might want to do that before you even add the laminate sheet, but like I said, don't cut it too far otherwise it won't be totally covering your offset if that makes sense. You just have to be pretty exact when you're adding those laminate sheets, but it worked and thankfully it was able to cut out the images. Since this is cutting through two materials, I wanted to make sure the cut setting worked and it didn't fully cut through. So I didn't unload my mat, thankfully. All I had to do was hit the start button and I just wanted it to go through and cut it out again. That's just a really great hack if you wanna make sure your Cricut cut correctly. You can sometimes test it out before you unload your mat. So if you're using this setting, just make sure you have it cut twice. I remove everything from the mat. I like to bend the mat backwards, especially since this one was really sticky. It makes it easier to get the paper off the mat. Here's how these look and I'm ready to add the magnets. First, I wanna show you magnets that do not work. These are from Michaels and they were just not strong enough. I could not get it to close very well and they were bulky too. So I did a lot of research. I found these on Amazon and they were perfect. They were strong enough. They are a little bit bigger than I wanted so I just easily took scissors and cut them in half. These have a nice strong adhesive on them. I have seen people use these little metal magnets and those made me too nervous with having a little two-year-old in the house, so I like these options a lot. I'm just removing four magnets. These easily cut in half and I remove the back paper that protects the adhesive and I place it on the bottom of the heart. With the other piece, I like to put the magnetic side down first so that it's going to be perfectly even. I remove that little sheet and just make sure I line this up well. Once that's lined up, I press the top together and I actually grabbed my scraper and pressed against it as well so it made a nice crease. I follow the exact same process for the other ones. Here's how these turned out. I love them so much. It was worth all the hassle with all the mistakes that I made, but they are just super, super cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you made these or are you planning on making them? If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you subscribed and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I would also love it if you gave me some things that you'd like to see in the future for my video. I really want to make videos that you guys want to see, so let me know what you're wanting to learn with the Cricut machine, sublimation, or just any crafting videos in general.